Hi, my name is Koshu Pradhyay and I am from Bellevue High School, which is in Bellevue, Washington, in the United States. To provide some information about me, I am a junior in high school. I'm incredibly passionate about CS and involved in the CS community at my high school as the president of two programming related clubs. I'm also incredibly passionate about STEM learning and run a nonprofit to help promote STEM learning among elementary and middle school students. My research interests include applying artificial intelligence to help improve the lives of others. I would like to thank the global health leaders at John Hopkins University for giving me this opportunity. My project is about using language and artificial intelligence for profiling and therapy recommendation to people living with dementia. Over 50 million people have dementia, a number that is expected to nearly triple and reach 135 million by 2050. Only 13% of primary care physicians in the front lines of dementia say that they underwent proper training required to diagnose, profile, and treat dementia. This often causes for people to not get profiled correctly or to not receive appropriate treatment worsening their dementia. I have witnessed this firsthand as a volunteer at a local memory care center. Patients get treated the same regardless of their stage in dementia. Given the shortcomings of current tests, it is crucial to develop proper profiling and therapy recommendation techniques. Tests such as MMSE have accuracies as low as 80%, while other tests only focus on certain aspects of dementia. Furthermore, tests also require professional supervision, making a time-consuming and expensive multi-step process. Every year, American families spend over $18 billion on profiling and therapy adjustments alone. To solve these problems, an artificially intelligent solution can be made to be accurate, automated, and accessible. To do so, I implemented three different artificially intelligent approaches. The first was Natural Language Processing, or NLP. Through NLP, a computer is able to understand and interpret human language, thus converting language into numerical measurements. These numerical measurements are then inputted into supervised learning models. Supervised learning learns from previous data to produce output, which in this case was the behavioral biomarker scores for profiling. Two different supervised learning models were used, logistic regression and neural networks. Logistic regression is a binary classifier model and was used to produce one of the features that was inputted into the neural network. The neural network, which is modeled off of the human brain, produced this, the final scores for profiling. These profiles are then inputted into an unsupervised clustering model. Through clustering, the patterns in data are analyzed to produce output, which was the therapy recommendations. Here are my research goals and hypotheses. And here are my variables. Given the artificially intelligent approach in mind, I implemented my multi-model system in four parts. The first step was data generation, which converted the raw audio files into transcripts. Initially, the audio files contained the voice of both an interviewer and a patient, so I relied on speaker diarization algorithms to segment the text by speaker, only extracting the words spoken by the patient. These transcripts were then inputted into the feature extraction module. Features of accuracy and time were extracted from the transcripts, producing eight features to assess cognition. These features were then inputted into the profiling module, where the final scores for recall, reasoning, executive function, and overall cognition were extracted. The overall cognition score was oriented with the ADISCOG test, a well-reputed cognition test. The recall, reasoning, executive function, and overall cognition scores were then inputted into the recommendation module, where a mini batch k-means clustering model was applied to produce therapy recommendations. Features were extracted based on each task individually. The first two tasks were auditory recall and visual recall. Auditory recall consisted of a patient being told a story and asked to recall it a couple of minutes later, while for visual recall, patients were provided a scene and were asked to narrate what they notice. The nouns and verbs were extracted from the patient's sentences using uh, BERT and then were compared to baseline data. This was done through cosine similarity. For reasoning, Patients were provided one, two, and three words, and were asked to form a sentence using these words. Four different metrics were used to measure the overall accuracy for the reasoning task. These metrics were completeness, syntax, sensibility, and complexity. The completeness was done through subset extraction and ensured the presence of all required words in the sentence. The syntax was done through tokenization and validated the absence of fragmented sentences and grammar as agrammatism is a problem that all dementia patients face, regardless of their stage in dementia. A sensibility check was done through logistic regression, which produced a confidence score between zero and one. The sensibility check indicated whether or not the sentence that a patient said made sense. 
Finally, a complexity check was done to ensure the patient's ability to think critically. The overall accuracy was measured as shown in equation one. For executive function tasks, patients were provided a genre and were asked to list words relating to that genre in the time frame of 60 seconds. The average word count of a person without dementia was extracted as a baseline from the control group and was compared to the word count of a patient as shown in equation two. These features were then inputted into the profiler neural network. The neural network consisted of four layers, one input layer, two hidden layers, and one output layer. The input layer contained eight neurons corresponding to the features generated in the feature extraction module. This was then passed into the hidden layers. There are two hidden layers, with each hidden layer having 120 neurons each. The hidden layer applied a function of Gaussian error linear unit, or GALU. Once the prerequisites of GALU were met, it was then passed into the output layer, where the overall recall reasoning executive function and overall cognition scores were produced. The overall cognition score was oriented with the Addis-Cox score due to its high um, suitability with the data and also because of its high accuracy. The most difficult part was um, for creating the neural network was training due to the large volatility in data. Initially, solely the RMS prop optimizer was applied as backpropagation, which produced an accuracy of only 72%. To account for this setback, I implemented both the RMS prop optimizer and the dropout, which in improved my accuracy to 92%. The profiling scores were first inputted into a mini batch k means clustering algorithm. They were then clustered into seven clusters according to the Riesberg scale. The Riesberg scale was chosen because it mapped each cluster into symptoms, which allowed for easier therapy recommendation to be done. Then the z-score was calculated based on the center of each cluster uh, for each of the features. From the z-score, extensive research was done to recommend therapies. To evaluate the effectiveness of the system, evaluation metrics for the profiler neural network and the therapy recommendation clustering model were calculated separately. The accuracy of the profiler neural network was 91.92, which surpassed the initial goal of 85%. The mean absolute errors and the root mean squared errors can also account for the errors that were produced in the data and indicate that the model was able to represent the data incredibly well. For clustering, standard clustering metrics were applied to allow for interpretability. The folks mouse score of 0.907 surpassed the initial goal of 0.8. The higher homogeneity school score also indicates that the model was able to distinguish among clusters easier. A total of 1,600 data points were used, which surpassed the initial goal of 1,000 data points. The system was also low cost, costing only $10 per patient, and was able to produce results rapidly in around four minutes. In the future, I would like to make further optimizations to the project. While the system was computationally effective, I would like to optimize the feature extraction module to produce a profile in under two minutes. I would also like to do further training to account for patients who may have missing data. I would like to partner with memory care centers to test my solution and implement my solution with Alexa to bring it to the market. Overall, by measuring behavioral biomarkers using artificial intelligence, my solution is accurate, automated, and accessible. I hope to make my solution available to millions of people struggling with dementia and help improve their quality of life. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation.